Hello ladies and gentlemen, Willie here. So this is a Willie video about uh, a server that I've been part of. Servers, we all have one. It's a key part of Classic and something which has changed in the opinions of many for the worse over the years on retail. However, our current state of affairs is beginning to, well, degrade quite a bit really. It's a topic I'm starting to see pop up more and more and that is the rates at which servers are emptying as the top few absorb their player bases creating mega servers. Yep. There are as of now two servers Benediction and A and Firemore EU with populations of over 20,000 active players that's and that's a lot only of based upon people. weekly arenas and Warcraft logger. The thing is like nobody wants to play on a dead server and this is one of the things that Final Fantasy does really well is that Final Fantasy you can just uh, and this is like after they they'll introduce the data center moving people don't want to play on a server that limits their options so like why should you have to worry about what server you're playing on if you want to play with your friends or you want to get into a raid group like how is this a good enjoyable experience for the player this is just simply a barrier to entry this is annoying it makes it harder to find groups it just sucks dick so most people want to play on a server that's more populated, of course, because it's easier to find groups. There are more resources in the auction house or more people buying resources. Uh, it's just what people want to do, like playing on small servers. There are people that like playing on small servers, guaranteed. But most people clearly uh, like playing on big servers. That's why big servers have most of the people on them. Entries. Yes, people have alts but this is skipping out so much of the casual crowd. How many of you guys have experienced one of the following? You felt it necessary to transfer to continue enjoying the game? Yes. Your server has become heavily one faction dominant from transfers or leaders, or yes. your server has just died because everybody has left? Yes. I transferred personally at the All end of, of the phase above. five back in Classic. I thought well PvP was going to be a pain in the burning crusade and this was on Gehenna. and even back then it had an okay faction balance and it is reflected yeah. on ironforge.pro. We fast forward to how it looks now and the Alliance are probably going to cease to exist in another six months or so. Yeah, this is just what's going to happen. I, I know it doesn't show but it's 20% Alliance on Gehenna here. Uh, this is just what's going to happen because these things are, they are self, uh, self-radicalizing. It's a snowball effect. Once you get to 60-40, then it's a lot easier to get to 70-30. And if you're 70-30, it's a whole lot easier to get to 80-20. And this is where we're at. And it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And the way, the reason why this happens is because the people that are on the dominant faction aren't leaving because why the fuck would they leave? Their servers are great. You know, they can play with their friends. There's tons of people on their server. It's awesome. And they've got friends on here. They can go out and do whatever they want. And then the people that are on the uh, the, the minimal faction, they're, it, it's not just harder to go out and do stuff in the world because of PvP. That's not the only thing. You've also got less people that are on the server organically. So it's like if you're trying to make a Karazhan group, which server would it be easier to make a Karazhan group on? The server with 2k people or the server with 20k people? It's obvious. So, of course, people are going to move to bigger servers because they don't want to be stuck trying to find groups and stuck trying to do things. And this is a big, big PvP server. It had a lot of stability from Classic with a yep. huge competitive private server player base. And despite that, the faction war has gone to one-sided. Mm -hmm. In actual vanilla, the server caps were dynamic between around 2,500 to 5,000 based on technical limitations as per Mark Kern in a message here. And he was the team lead on the game. Yeah. Even in Classic, however, we had so many servers that went way, way over that with server caps being speculated to be easily three to five times as this much. This was so cool man like this is the kind of stuff like just riding through an open field this is all this is the, this is the coolest shit this is why i like playing mmos just like these large scale viewer events and things like that it is so awesome you feel like you're part of something bigger it's like you know you play the lord of the rings music oh it's insane much tech has improved after all and those first few weeks of classic the queues were absolutely something else where people were remote logging in from work and running into walls to avoid the dreaded timeout and oh my god was yeah it was awful that time though it was pretty rigid and seemed to be needing to be directly turned on or off depending on the circumstance layering yeah. has also evolved a lot now it's got cooldown timers to stop the excessive layer please spam mm -hmm. or from dodging pvp too much 
More layers appear to also be dynamically added once the server hits a certain threshold. I think on launch of TBC for Pyewood Village, we went up to about 12 layers total, and it was very smooth at that, and then it was back down to five or seven by the middle of the night before yep. constantly fluctuating. And layers is how Blizzard Berlin solved the, the overpopulation in Classic, and it works, but it only really works and indeed benefits overpopulation. It doesn't stop it, nor the cause of why it is happening. Yeah. Now, what is currently happening with overpopulation is not the Players first like time channels? it's done yeah. so. Retail went this way, and they came up with a solution too, called sharding, except unlike layering, which creates an entire copy-paste of the world for players should there be too many, oh, sharding so works cool, on an dude. individual zone and even individual location. Bro, like, this actually makes me nostalgic for Classic WoW. Seeing these, uh, seeing these screenshots and these videos of, like, just everybody together. Oh, bro, like, this is... It makes me so nostalgic to see this because this was the one thing that I really enjoyed doing back in uh, in Classic. It was so fucking fun. Bases. This is why sometimes when you run up to a mining or herb node in retail, it disappears in front of you. And it aims to load balance the maximum number of players that can be in one place at one time. Too many get there, another shard is created. Yep. Now this does two things. It makes vastly overpopulated servers playable and have no queues. So in this way, it solves overpopulation just like layering, but it also makes realms which have an extremely low population feel more active, as players from these mega servers are placed onto the same shard as they are. In fact, yep. you only need to be on a particular realm on retail if you want to mythic raid. That may be soon to change. Yeah, they need to get rid of that, bro. Like the, the mythic raiding requirement where you can only do mythic raids with people that are on your server. Fuck that. Like that, 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 that's gone. Like just get rid of that in the next expansion. Like in my opinion, this is what they need to do in the next expansion. Uh, get rid of, get rid of the mythic raiding requirement. Make it to where you can raid with anybody that you want on any server and also any faction. Make it to where you can play with the opposite faction with end game activities. So I'm talking about like arena, battlegrounds, raiding, like basically any sort of end game activity you can play with the other faction. And that way you can do what you want to do. You can play what you want to play. Because the thing is that th you're being able to play with everyone is going to happen one way or another. The way it w is happening right now is you're able to play with everybody that plays World of Warcraft because everybody plays Horde. But if they don't stop that, it will get even worse. And then also you'll have more Alliance players unsub because they can't play the game effectively because they're not Horde. And they don't want to swap over for whatever reason. Or you make it where everybody can play and you'll actually grow the Alliance population because there are going to be people who want to play Alliance for aesthetic reasons or lore reasons or just personal reasons that are not playing Alliance right now because Horde is just that much better. Changed by what I'm hearing, Mythic Plus or Arena, I think. Maybe that's changed. <laughs> I couldn't find any info on it. So based on this, who is going to see the most benefit from sharding then? The people that aren't bothered about those activities, the ones who only play every so often or who come back for patches, the casual player base. Layering does help casuals on big servers as it eliminates yeah, it queues, does. but when realms get dead and people start to leave, it does literally nothing. Sharding isn't there, so it's either $25 to move, Hope Blizzard offers free transfers, which they did, but just really, really late, reroll yeah. to a different server, barely anybody's going to do that, or just say, you know what, screw this, I'm out, because the auction house will be empty, there'll be no dungeons going, we don't have an LFD, no raids because no mm -hmm. LFR, there'll be no guilds, no pugs, certainly no arena, yeah, you there'll can't be battlegrounds as their cross-server, as well as your post-apocalyptic solo Warcraft RP, but that's about it. You really need a decent server population on Classic. On the 16th of November this year, Blizzard opened up free transfers for many servers in the Burning Crusade who were on a downward <laughs> death spiral. Now, every single yeah, one of that. them is mega dead. I checked a few of them at peak times over the weekend and yeah, see You're the stealing of people online ideas, for I yourself. See. And the game will even still allow you to roll here as a new player. Imagine making See, like that's that's what's so bad to me is that these 17 people that are playing the game, uh, it says 17 total players found on the entire server. These 17 people are having a bad experience in the game. I can almost guarantee you their experience for the game is not as good as it would be if they were playing on a full server. And this is completely a problem that is engineered by Blizzard. Blizzard has caused this problem to happen by not balancing the servers and moving players to different servers. As a new player, imagine making that mistake. 
and on ironforge.pro there are plenty of servers that one or two months ago had a weekly peak player base of two to three thousand and now yep. they're all literal ghost towns gandling kertanos skerum incendius that server's been one hell of a roller coaster Ooh. the list goes on and on Ooh. and where did blizzard allow these realms to transfer to Yep, the literal biggest realm in the entire world. I mean, where else would they go? Imagine they opened up yeah. a bunch of transfers to medium population servers. It's an upgrade, sure, but not by a whole lot. At least you know there is certainly a population on Benediction or on Firemore. Yeah. And people are already asking for transfers and mergers on Season of Mastery too, as guess what? People want to play on the Mega Server because it's an MMORPG in the first two ends, as it turns this out. This is why, I w yeah, Mega Servers are a thousand times better. Like, I would only ever want to play on a mega server because that's where everybody's at. I want to play on a server with everybody else. Why the fuck would I not want to do that? It just makes sense. Are pretty important to your experience. As far as I'm aware for North America, it's John Gabar for PvP mm -hmm. or Obsidian Edge for PvE. And in EU, it's Dreadnought for PvP and Kingsfall for PvE. I did some Ultra Rift Valley last night and, well, you can see for yourself the proportion of where players were. In fact, a lot of servers on yep. Seasonal Mastery won't even have All enough player base for a bracket one slot without excessive pool boosting. And in Classic in 2019, it took till around Phase 2 before Blizzard opened up transfers. It'll yeah, happen it was eventually way too in late. Season of Mastery, usually the day before I post a video like this if I can convince Fate once again. And the thing is, Blizzard do have the tech to, well, not merge servers, but connect. So they did it when Classic Era dropped, where yeah. instead of combining the populations, they keep their names and their guilds and then just have the server in addition to that. Pretty simple. So why isn't this being used in more cases where it probably should be? Well, I'm starting to see the dollar signs. Transfers equal money. But how much money? You know, before actually- If Blizzard is actually withholding transfers because they want people to spend more money, I genuinely cannot imagine being that stupid. Because for every person who transfers, there's five people who stop paying a sub. I can guarantee you, because a lot of people don't want to transfer their character. They don't know how to transfer their character. They just log on and they just stop playing because they can't do anything and all their friends left the server and that's it. I, I don't understand it. Like if this is actually what they're doing, they're just completely stupid. But I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, with Blizzard these days. That could be the case trying to get some numbers i bet the amount they made off of them would be very little but let's see first of all yeah. the profit margin for the transfers must be nearly 100 percent because they're entirely automated yeah that's one good thing going for them let's say this is going to have to be real hypothetical but point. let's say about 20 percent of the players shown in ironforge.pro have bought a transfer in Q3 of this year. Okay. So that will be around 60,000 players in the space of four months. Of I people. don't think the number will be this high, but just for the sake of it. So it'll be 60,000 times $25, that's 1.5 million. That's not, not bad, one and a half small loans right there. How much did Blizzard make in Q3, which ended November 2nd? Yeah. 493 million. And 1.5 million as a percentage of 493 million is 0. 3%. Yeah, it doesn't even make a difference at all. That's what I'm saying. It's like it's not worth the PR hit effectively, and it's not worth the diminished experience for getting one or two percent more revenue. It's it's just not. 0 0.3, and I think that is using numbers which would be considerably above the amount of transfers they're actually getting. Yeah. And as a percentage of their operating income or actual profit, which is probably a better number due to the cost efficiency of transfers, this is around 0.8%. Mm -hmm. 0.8% of income from something which has zero input. I don't know, actually, that's not too bad, is it? But for a company like Blizzard, each record is just a new benchmark. You absolutely bet yourself they're squeezing as hard as possible to find new places to dig up some extra revenue. You oh, can apply can this to any big business that. you want to. This isn't even a Blizzard bad thing. Just look at the state of Kellogg's at the moment. There are people whose jobs it is to find out how to make more money using current resources in any way possible. Lower yep. quality of life features at work, cutting corners, firing staff after a record year which happened at blizzard they don't mm -hmm. care if you're playing a game buying a phone or on a plane as long as the bottom line is bigger it is a win this is how business works we're getting a yeah people are itemized and they're just a uh, they're a number in a log book uh this is just what happens and it, it's probably one of the most i think it's one of the most valid criticisms of like western capitalism uh is that people get basically like through optimization the human element 
of, of a business is taken out of consideration. Like it's no longer about uh, it, it's no longer about making a good product. It's no longer about having good employees. It's no longer about any of this stuff. Uh, it's about how to maximize the amount of money that you're making for that quarter. And of course, this is uh, exacerbated by the fact that you have to meet stockholder and shareholder expectations. Shareholders and stockholders want somebody who's running the company to make them as much money as possible. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have 401ks, you have uh, investment retirement accounts, things like that. And your accounts and your 401ks grow more because of actions taken that are harmful to employees in many cases or harmful to the product in many cases. So I, I don't know like what the entire solution is to this. In my opinion, I think it's it's hard to like legislate a solution to this, but I, I think it's a huge problem. Yeah, it's a it's a huge fucking problem. And, and I'm not saying that like, I, I don't want people to get into like, oh, but what about socialism? What about co communism? Those are bad too. And that's not part of the conversation. That has nothing to do with it. This is just a problem with the way that we run things here in America. That's all there is. There needs to be a middle ground. Yeah, there needs to be a middle ground. Uh, people that take some degree of uh, responsibility and some degree of pride in providing a, uh, a good wage and a good product, which is uh, not as common, especially not in publicly traded companies. They become soulless very fast, even if they don't want to be. Can't properly measure the human part? Yeah, exactly. So they just cut it out. Problem solved off topic but the point is transfers are small but they matter they matter overall just as much as anything else does yeah. we didn't even talk about factions yet either which really don't help half the reason servers are emptying is because oh boy i only died three times tonight to get into ssc or okay guys brb whilst the healer gets the dungeon because insert of a faction is ganking at the summoning stone at the yeah. moment is not Why fun if you are on the receiving end players are not only sorting themselves yeah, it's like just a reasonable, normal person doesn't want to spend 30 minutes more waiting to do a dungeon because some party member is getting ganked. This is not an experience that is enjoyable for an average person. This is not something like people are like, oh, wow, this is really cool. You know, it, it's a shared world, etc. It, it's not fun. Just don't play on a PvP server. Well, that's that's literally what's happening, though. Like, people are taking that advice. They're not playing on the PvP servers, and they're all transferring to the mega PvP servers that are one faction dominated. You see what I'm saying? So that that's exactly what's happening. It's into mega servers, but ones where they are the biggest pool of players. At Quick the end classic, of the day, it's up to Blizzard to regulate it. Players are making yeah. the most of the situation Why do and that? the solutions that are offered. It's just like the ranking system in Classic, where people pool boost and bracket stack. It's all about gaming the system for your benefit. Because yep. Blizzard have the power to connect servers, they can regulate faction populations if they really wanted to, and it's Blizzard that chooses how many servers there are, not you or me. It's honestly too far gone at this point. Things will get worse in Wrath of the Lich King. Oh, yeah. Arena already had a few servers that were going to be populated solely because of that. Tier 5 has not been easy for a lot of guilds who have fallen apart yep. or lost to the inevitable roster boss and then transferred off to the mega servers. Where else would you go? Imagine how things will look when you're recruiting for hard mode Ulduar, Trial of the Grand Crusader, or ICC yep. 25 Heroic. It'll be Tier 5 turnover on steroids so um yeah that's basically what happened on retail and it's happening on classic but we don't have sharding to fix it and people would absolutely lose their minds if blizzard tried to put this in the game exactly. I think layering is fine but up to a certain point and if things don't change people will continue to choose the mega servers and they will gradually absorb all the small and dying ones there are 25 literally 100 percent dead realms last time i checked 25 of them on a live tbc Zero yeah, rate. there's probably more dead realms than alive realms at this point. This is just crazy. Like, I, I've been to some of these servers before for, like, videos, and it's just depressing. It, it's just fucking depressing seeing these realms, man. I'm going to be honest. It really is. Ding logs recorded per week. Zero arena games. And there are 25 the Alliance is completely them. And that dead. only going yeah. to continue to grow. $25 at a time. I usually try and say at the end, well, XYZ could help or ADC would fix it, but yeah. for real, I'm clean out of ideas that don't involve time travel to do anything about this. You'd have to give people a real incentive not to pick the biggest servers or block transfers in some way. Until then, get your tickets. Mega mm -hmm. servers are here to stay and growing by the day. That's about oh, all. Yeah. Let me know your thoughts, whether this is a Well, the mega server issue is the, the, the faction imbalance in retail is just a larger scale version of the mega server issue because people don't want to have 
people don't want servers to be a barrier to them playing with each other. The player does not want this. And also in Retail WoW, the player does not want factions to be a barrier to playing with other people. That's it. It doesn't matter what Blizzard's ideology is behind the game or anything like that. The player is just going to do what they want. The People want convenience. Yeah, people just want convenience. And Final Fantasy solves this because they don't have any fucking factions. You can play with anybody you want, and whenever they add data center, uh, data center uh, crossplay, you can play with anybody on North America that you want. It's the same as if you go and I, uh, like, let's say you're playing PUBG, or let's say you're playing Fortnite, and you want to play with somebody. You just invite them. You don't have to worry about, oh, man, I'm on the Texas server. I can't invite you, man. We can't play Fortnite together because you're in Texas and I'm in Florida. No, you just play with the other person. That's it. This is kind of the example of like a game, a, a game design ideology that has just reached its logical conclusion. This is what would have happened no matter what, because people will always gravitate towards the easiest and the best and the most convenient thing. It's how min-maxing happens with everything, is because eventually everything gets min-maxed. That's the way it goes. I don't know why WoW doesn't get rid of factions completely, considering Horde and Alliance. They're going to. Uh, in the new expansion, they're going to remove factions. Uh, or remove the ability to not be able to play with them. You will be able to play with people cross-faction in the next expansion. Did you at all? And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening in. I shall see you on the next one. Yeah. Be soon. So I'll read a couple of comments here before I go to the next one. Unpopular opinion, I hate non-PP servers and ganking is actually fun. Well, yeah, you're going to think that though, but like, I can guarantee you, you're not going to feel that way if you're sitting there waiting in BRD for your healer who just keeps getting ganked running into Blackrock Mountain and it takes them 60 minutes, 40 minutes to get there. That's not fun. Doing World PvP 1v1 in Hillsbrad is fun. Like, yeah, for sure. Usually it can be. But whenever you're going and you're just getting shit on and you're having your time wasted by something that's not even involving you, this is a party member of yours, and there's a 10-man group killing them, and you're in a five-man dungeon group, there's nothing you can do about it. You see what I'm saying? Like, it, it's, it, it matters, like, how much you're able to compartmentalize it. And in Classic WoW and in Burning Crusade, it's not very compartmentalized. It's such a bigger part of the game, and because of that, people don't want to play with it. Yeah, nobody wants to corpse walk all day. That's it. So J. Allen Brack was right? No, he wasn't right. Of course he wasn't fucking right. The, the, the phrase, you think you do, but you don't. <sighs> no. Just because there are some things in Classic that didn't work out in the long term doesn't mean that Classic wasn't a huge success. Classic WoW was a massive fucking success. Like, how, how can you watch, like, clips like this? How can you see things like this? Like... And, and, and say that it wasn't a huge fucking success, man. Like, it was massive. It was huge. It was super popular. Everybody loved it. Like, there's nothing... There's nothing bad about that at all. And it was great. I don't think he was right at all, but he was right about some things. Or you can say what he said and be right about some things. As Mad Season 1 said, Blizzard monetizes their games in ways that actively hurt them. True, and they don't care because there's enough Blizzard uh, Blizzard zombies who will buy them anyway, and it doesn't matter to them. A temporary blow up of success doesn't mean it was an overall success. Oh no, I, I, I really feel like Classic WoW was very popular for the entire life cycle. I think that until Nax Ramos, it was really popular. And Nax would have been bigger if they hadn't released it on the same week of Shadow than Shadowlands. Yeah, it was very, very popular. Uh, it, maybe it wasn't as popular as Retail WoW. I would say in Phase 1 and 2, it was more popular than Retail WoW. After that, I would say it probably went the other way. This is just like my my guess, my, uh, my assumption. But before that, it was extremely popular, man. Classic was always in demand. They just expected stuff to kill it. Uh, yeah, well, st I don't know about that. Even Scaraboard was huge. Well, yeah, it was because it was before Nax, right? Before Nax, Classic was extremely popular. The only reason people stopped raiding in Nax is because Nax was really hard, number one. And so people like Classic Boomers couldn't handle that. Number two, I think that, yeah, they just released it at a bad time because Shadowlands on release was really good. Shadowlands was a great expansion uh, on release. It was good for the first two months into Castle Nathria. And then after that, it was bad because everybody had all the gear. Everybody had everything. There was no new content coming out. Mythic gave you nothing that was special and it was just boring. 
Yeah, it, the, except the mall was dog shit. The mall was dog shit. It was 100% dog shit. You're totally right. However, the beginning of the expansion was was very enjoyable. The beginning of every WoW expansion is very enjoyable. The beginning of every uh, MMO is very enjoyable. Like the beginning of, of New World was fun, right? Uh, Ashes of Creation will be fun on release. Uh, BC was fun on release. Everything's always fun on release at the beginning, and, and then it goes down. So what happens with uh, uh, with Classic WoW is that it was very popular, but then this other game came out that was competing with it because there are a lot of people that play retail and they also play uh, Classic WoW. And I think that actually more people probably moved over and tried out Shadowlands that were in Classic WoW. They were just like, ah, you know, let's see what this game is like. We'll see what they've got. A lot of them might have stuck with it. And I think it hurt Nax Ramos. Also, another big reason it hurt Nax is the fact that it took so long. It took a huge amount of fucking time to get consumables. What's going on? It's New World right over here. And it's because I still had the voice open. I still had the voice chat open and people were talking. Yeah, I thought somebody like got in my house or something like that. I was gonna have to go downstairs. Classic grind for consumes and world buffs was exhausting. Yeah, exactly. I think that's really what happens is like the, uh, the grind for like consumables and stuff like that is just, it's too fucking much, man. I think that's that's why people stopped raiding in Nax is that they just had to spend too much time outside of the raid in order to get resources for the raid. It's just, it becomes not fun. So yeah, that's all there is to it.